Boltwarden is an open source and self-hosted version of the Bitwarden server. If you don't know what Bitwarden is, well, it's a password manager where you can store your passwords, 2FA codes, passkeys, and so much more like credit cards and SSH keys. And you'll have peace of mind knowing that you can access all these details from all of your devices and that they're not floating around in some company's database. Also show how you can do this without exposing your server to the public internet at all, so it's so much more safer. You'll be far less vulnerable to data breaches compared to any other method of hosting. Anyways, if this works for you, please leave a like and subscribe, and let's start the video. Vault Warden requires certificates to run, which might sound like a hassle to set up, but it's really simple with Nginx Proxy Manager, and you'll have encryption, so it's also good. You can use a free service like DuckDNS to get a free subdomain, but I recommend purchasing a domain on something like Porkbun. It's really cheap and it looks nice when accessing any service like Vault Warden without DuckDNS.org being at the end of the URL. But you can just use DuckDNS if you don't mind that. You might think that would require you to expose your home lab to the public internet, but you don't. Instead of pointing your domain to a public IP address, we can point it to a tailscale IP address. I made a video on Tailscale a while ago, but essentially it's a peer-to-peer -peer VPN service which lets you securely connect to your servers from anywhere in the world. So you can point your domain to that Tailscale IP address, and if anyone tries to access that domain, they won't see anything because it points to an address that they can't access unless they are on your Tailscale network. And it's really simple to install Tailscale. The instructions are on their website, you just need a Google account that you can sign into. I'll just sign into my Google account to manage this Tailnet. And the command to install it is right here for Linux systems. And I'm going to install it on my Raspberry Pi, where I'm going to set up Vault Warden and Nginx Proxy Manager. So here I'm SSH'd into my Raspberry Pi, and I'm going to install Tailscale. Now on all of your devices, you're also going to need to install Tailscale and log into the same Google account. And then you'll be able to access your Raspberry Pi anywhere in the world. Tailscale is available on the Play Store, on the App Store, and on every computer operating system. Now once you finish installing Tailscale, it'll tell you to run this command to authenticate Tailscale. I'll copy this link and I'll sign into my Google account to add it to my Tailnet. And do this on the rest of your devices as well. Now that it's added, I should see it in tailscale.com slash admin. I see that this device is already added. And the green means it's online as well. Now let me also enable Tailscale on my laptop. Okay, now both of my devices are online, and now I can use this IP address to contact my Raspberry Pi from anywhere. Now we're going to go ahead and set up Nginx Proxy Manager on our Raspberry Pi. So on your Raspberry Pi, we're going to make a new directory, and I'm just going to call it npm. You can call this whatever you want. Now these commands should work on all devices. Now we can go into that directory by doing this, cd npm, and then we'll create a docker compose file to run Nginx Proxy Manager in docker. If you don't have Docker installed, you can also install that on any operating system, and I have a video on that, but it's really simple to set up. Just head to docker.com and install the version that's right for your computer. Now to create a Docker Compose file, it's different for each computer, but I'm going to use Micro since that's the text editor that I'm used to. But on Mac and Linux, you can use Nano, which is pre-installed on most of the distributions and Mac OS. And if you're on Windows, you'd run something like notepad compose.yml to make a file named compose.yml. So I'm just going to make this file and then I'll paste in the contents that you can find in the description. This is the Docker Compose configuration for Nginx Proxy Manager. It's just this small. We're using an Nginx Proxy Manager image and we've named it npm as well. And this network we haven't created yet but we'll create right after saving this file. Here we're exposing the ports that are required for Nginx Proxy Manager to run. And this is where we will access our web UI. If this port is taken on your system, you can change the number on the left here to change where the web UI is hosted, but don't change any of these ports. Now I'm going to save this file with Ctrl S and then Ctrl Q to exit. If you're on Nano, it'll be Ctrl S and then Ctrl X. Now to start this up, we're first going to create that Docker network that we mentioned in the compose file. We'll create that with Docker network, create, and then npm. Now once you see this string, you'll know that the network is created. Now we can start up the compose file by running docker compose up dash d. And if you ever need to restart nginx proxy manager at any point, you can type dash dash force recreate. But since we're running this for the first time, we don't need to do that. This pulling process is downloading the nginx proxy image from the internet, but starting up the actual container only takes a couple of seconds. So whenever you restart, it won't take this long. Okay, so now the container fully started, and this Raspberry Pi is a little slow, so it took some time. But now let's try to access the Nginx Proxy Manager webpage from our browser. And let's actually try to use this Tailscale IP address so that we know it's working. 
So from your admin panel, you can copy it like this with this arrow and then copying the IP address. And now in a new tab, we can paste this IP address and then put a colon at the end of it and then 81 to access the web page. You might need to put HTTP colon slash slash at the beginning of your URL so it doesn't default to HTTPS. And when you open the page for the first time, you should see this login page. And there is a default email and password that you'll need to type, which you can search up online. It's just admin at example.com and the password is change me. So I'll just type that over here and then I'll click sign in. And now we'll ask you to enter in this information. And then you also need to set a new password and I'll just save that. Now in the three bars over here, we can go over to SSL certificates. And if you already know how to do this, you can skip in the chapters, but I'm gonna go through it really quickly. We'll click on add SSL certificate and we'll pause right here and go over to our domain settings. You're gonna need to change what IP address your domain points to. On DuckDNS, this is where we set the IP address and I'm just gonna click update IP. And now this domain will point to this IP address. But if you're using something else like Cloudflare, you'll need to create a record that points to this IP address. And you can make the whole domain point to this address or you can make only certain subdomains point to this address. It's all up to you. But if you need more information on how to do this on Cloudflare, there is another detailed video that I'll leave in the description and in the card. It goes a lot more over how to create these SSL certificates and point your domain to the IP address with Cloudflare. Now once you pointed your domain to the right IP address, we're going to copy this token over here for DuckDNS. Now the process is different for whatever domain management website you use, but for DuckDNS all you need to do is copy this token. For Cloudflare it is different and for that the video that I linked goes a lot more in depth into how to do that for Cloudflare. But right now I'm just going to show how to do it for DuckDNS. Now I'm going to type this here in the domain names. This means that any subdomain before mothercraft.duckdns.org will work for this SSL certificate. And I'll click enter here. And I'll also do mothercraft.duckdns.org. So I can also use this domain with this SSL certificate. Now we're going to check this button, use a DNS challenge. And then for DNS provider, you'll choose what you have. And this is where the instructions differ for whatever DNS provider you have. So I'm going to paste my token in over here. And then we're going to agree to this as well. Now for the propagation seconds, if this SSL certificate generation fails, then you can enter in something like 60 or 120 over here, and then it'll start working. But I'm just going to leave this as blank and see if this fails. Now it will take a minute or two for this to finish. Now here it has failed and it'll show you something like this. I'm just going to change the propagation seconds to 60 and try again. Now it successfully created these certificates and we can test this out by creating a test proxy host that points to our nginx proxy manager. We can just create a domain name like npm.mobicraft.duckdns.org or you would use your own domain but put npm or something like that in front of it and then we'll point it to npm and then the port would be 81. This is the host name that we set in the docker configuration file. Now in SSL make sure you click on the SSL certificate and select this certificate. Then we'd select these two options and now we can go ahead and save this now once that is done, if we click on this, we should be able to access our Nginx Proxy Manager web UI from this domain and it will have HTTPS with a valid certificate. It says that the connection is secure. And now I'm going to log in again and now we can just use this URL to manage our domain. Now let's go ahead and actually set up Vault Warden. Now to set up the Vault Warden container, this is probably the easiest part of the video. Just make a Vault Warden directory wherever you want and then we change directory into that and now we're going to create another compose file and again use whatever text editor that works for you and then paste in this configuration file which I'll leave in the description. This is the configuration file for Vault Warden. Here you need to replace this with whatever your domain is. I just put VW for Vault Warden so it's shorter and we didn't create this proxy host yet in Nginx Proxy Manager but we will in a second. And over here, we're placing this in the Nginx Proxy Manager network, so we don't have to open any ports to this Vault Warden instance. And here we're just defining where the Nginx Proxy Manager network is coming from. We're just saying it's an external network that we created. Now the rest of this Docker Compose configuration file is really simple. We're just using the latest Vault Warden image. And then we're setting a volume over here, which will store permanent data. Now I'm just going to save this and then start up this configuration file with docker compose up-d. Now that this Vault Warden container is up and running, we're going to make another proxy host so we can access this Vault Warden instance with our domain. So just make sure you click on hosts and then proxy hosts over here. And then we're going to create a new proxy host. And here you would put in whatever domain you put in the Docker Compose file. Over here, we can put the host name of the container since we added it to our Nginx Proxy Manager network. 
If your Vault Warden instance is not running on the same computer as your Nginx Proxy Manager instance, you could just expose a port by adding a line like this in your Docker Compose file, and then just put the IP address of whatever computer is running Vault Warden over here, and then putting port 80 over here. Now make sure in SSL you select the right certificate, and then we'll force SSL and then enable this support. And then once we click save, it'll create that proxy host and we can click on it to access Vault Warden. Now this is what will show up when you first open the page. We're going to click create account. Now let me just create a dummy account, just like this. And I'll click continue and then create a really secure master password, which will be used to access your account. Now I'm going to go ahead and create this account. Now Vault Warden is completely set up and we've successfully created an account on this domain. Now we can access Vault Warden with extensions or the app on your phone and just make sure you have Tailscale installed so you can access Vault Warden with this domain. And you'll only be able to access this domain if you're on the Tailscale network. The cool thing about Bitwarden is you can use the official Bitwarden app and then you can enter your own URL to use with Bitwarden. Now at first you're gonna have nothing there. So if you have a lot of passwords stored in Chrome or Firefox or something like that, you can export that and then import that into Vault Warden. This import data button is here and it's also in tools and then import data. In this file format, you can see everything that is supported. There are a lot of different file formats that are supported. Even other password managers like Dashlane. Just search up the export process for whatever password manager you have. Now once you install the extension or the app and you log in, you'll get a pop-up like this whenever you sign into a new website with a new password. And whenever you're creating a passkey, Bitwarden will pop up asking where you want to save this passkey and it'll be tied to a login item. You can also save 2FA codes to your login entries. You might need to manually copy the seed of the 2FA code and then enter that into the login item over here. There are a lot of different details that you can store. Like for your identity, you can store stuff like your social security number and address and stuff like that. You can also store secure notes. So instead of using the notes app on your phone, you could store it here instead. And for the SSH key feature, when you create a new item, you can't actually put your own key here. It just creates a new key. So I just recommend replacing your SSH key with the one that Bitwarden generates. And then you can just store all of your SSH keys in Bitwarden. Anyways, there are a lot of Vault Warden features for you to explore. And I highly recommend going through this page and looking at all the features this has to offer. Anyways, if this worked for you, please leave a like and subscribe. And if you run into any issues, please leave them down in the comments below. And I'll try to respond as fast as possible. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video.